back to the big picture. Earlier this summer, hockey players took to the ice at the Harbor Center in downtown Buffalo to raise money to fight cancer. It's called the 11 Day Power Play. So we put a microphone on our friend Dave Jixter from 97 Rock and one of his teammates to go behind the scenes. <laughs> Buzz, I need a confidence building shift. Yeah, Marino! Yeah, minus three is enough for me. That's a good shift. It's one of my better shifts. They have you like that? Why? Because I'm <laughs> fascinating. I got these seats right next to the Sabres bench. Like was, right next to the bench. I thought I was sitting there watching you guys fly around. That was f***ing great. There's no <laughs> way. <laughs> way to go, Fink. Big skate! <laughs>
11 Day Power Play has raised over $10 million for cancer research. And you can still donate online at 11daypowerplay.com. Next week on The Big Picture, we have a special presentation with my friend, radio legend Sandy Beach and his wife Bernadette. Here is a preview. Let's talk a little bit about how you first got started in radio. What was your interest? What made you think you could be a radio person? Well, I started my career at the perfect time, and I'll tell you why. Uh, rock and roll was just coming in, and Mitch Miller was just saying goodbye. Uh, mm -hmm. And because we used to meet uh, and listen to radio, listen to music, uh, I say we, me, and my friends in Massachusetts, um, and also uh, used to listen to uh, George Hound Dog Lorenz. Uh, my mother and father grocery shopped uh, at AMP on Friday nights in which I could ride in the back seat and listen to the radio. Uh, and I was only allowed to listen to it for that one trip because you'd wear down the battery, okay? <laughs> and uh, George Hound Dog Lorenz uh, was on WKBW, uh, 1520, 50,000 watts of fire, uh, uh, fire breathing uh, dragon radio. I mean, mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Movin' is Groovin' and the Zanzibar Lounge and all this. It was, it was magical. And I heard, I heard uh, George Lorenz uh, once introduced Since I Met You Baby. Now, the introduction of a song that had that kind of an impact on me, I heard it and it was unbelievable. And I said, this is what I wanna do. This is what I want to do. Uh, and decided to uh, pursue it. I got into radio, I think, at the right time and I got out of it at the right time. <laughs> uh, and in between were 60 years of which um, I was unemployed in 60 years. I was unemployed for about four weeks. Which everyone will, that knows anything about radio or, or the media business is a miracle. Yeah. You know well, that. I once yeah. saw a survey in Billboard magazine, and it said that the average disc jockey's career lasted less than four months. And I did 60 years, so I, I think I, I, uh, I got I think, what I needed. I think so. You know, what's really interesting is the transition, all the different transitions that you've made over the 60 years from uh, being on the air, being a disc jockey, being a manager, being a talk show host. How did that, how did that work? A lot of it overlapped. In other words, uh, the, the jokes that I did as a disc jockey, keep in mind, uh, the, uh, uh, my absolute idol is uh, Joey Reynolds. And one of the reasons is, as I was just starting my career, Joey was already at KB, and so I was listening to him. If it's possible uh, for a person to have a love affair with a radio station, I had a love affair with WKBW. If I had never worked another day at another station, it would have been enough just to have worked at KB. Uh, but think of uh, what kind of talent it takes for Joey Reynolds to do this. When he was on the air, the music, uh, two minutes, two and a half minutes a song, all right? It's not much. And you're expected to do shtick in between every song. Oh my God. Every song. Now you picture uh, every two and a half to three minutes doing a different bit. Not easy. No. It's almost impossible sometimes. But he could do it. He could do it and he could sell it. And I, I was enamored of all this. Later I got to meet Joey and Joey and I uh, then and now are good friends, okay? Uh, but uh, all of that is, is like uh, schooling for being a talk show host. Rush Limbaugh was a disc jockey before he was a talk show host. Okay? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's true. And he carried, he had a lot of the same things as he talked about uh, what he did, the same kind of thoughts as I have of being able to entertain and getting your name out there and your, are those people listening to the show and all that. But he had the training to do it because he did it as a disc jockey. And now instead of talking about uh, 
uh, uh, rock and roll. He's talking about politics. Basically, it's the same thing. And if you'll notice, if there are any uh, talk show hosts that, uh, that you like, they were probably, probably disc jockeys at one time. The only uh, example I can think of that was not true was David Bellavia. David Bellavia on KB now right. is an excellent talk show host. Uh, he was never, uh, I, I, I believe he was never a disc jockey, but he is so good at what he does that makes you believe that he's covered all the bases. Make sure you watch this special show next week. I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. That's it for this edition of The Big Picture. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.